Hi everyone, welcome back to another lesson. In today's video, we're going to talk about a condition that sounds strange but is actually important to know for exams and clinical understanding, reheated rice syndrome. This is one of those classic foodborne illnesses that shows up in both board questions and real-world cases. We'll cover what causes it, how it works in the body, the key symptoms, and the differences between the two types of illness it causes. Let's get started. So first things first, what is reheated rice syndrome? This condition is a form of food poisoning caused by a bacteria called Bacillus cereus. Now Bacillus cereus is a gram-positive, rod-shaped bacterium. That just means it appears purple when stained under a microscope and looks like a little rod or stick. It's also spore-forming and toxin-producing, which is key to how it causes illness. Let's pause here for a second. Spores are like survival capsules for bacteria. They can survive extreme heat and other harsh conditions. So when rice is cooked and then left out at room temperature, the spores of Bacillus cereus can survive. If the rice is later reheated and eaten, the heat may kill some bacteria, but not the heat-resistant toxins that were already produced. And those toxins are what cause the illness. There are two main types of illness caused by Bacillus cereus, the emetic type and the diarrheal type. Let's quickly go over what we'll be covering in the rest of the lesson. We'll talk about how these two types differ in pathophysiology, when the symptoms appear after eating contaminated food, what signs and symptoms to look out for in each type, and rare but serious complications, including liver injury and respiratory issues. Now let's start with the emetic type. Emetic means vomiting. This form of the illness affects the upper gastrointestinal tract, mainly the stomach. The symptoms show up very quickly, within 30 minutes to 6 hours of eating the contaminated rice. Why so fast? Because the toxin responsible is already preformed in the food before you eat it. This toxin is called cerulide. Cerulide is extremely stable, which means even reheating the rice won't destroy it. Once you eat the rice, the toxin goes to work irritating the lining of your stomach. That leads to sudden nausea and vomiting, which are the hallmark symptoms of this emetic type. Think of it like the toxin punching the inside of your stomach and your body wants to get rid of it immediately. There may also be some abdominal pain, usually crampy and centered in the upper belly area, also called the epigastric region. Diarrhea can happen too, but it's usually mild and not the main feature in the emetic type. Now, here's something that's less commonly known. Cerulide toxin can affect your liver. In very rare cases, it has been linked to acute liver failure, especially in young children or people with weakened immune systems. This happens because the toxin interferes with the mitochondria in liver cells, causing cell injury. Remember, mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. If they're not working, nothing else will. So that's the emetic type. Rapid onset nausea and vomiting due to preformed serolide toxin, usually from reheated rice. Now let's move on to the second type, the diarrheal type of Bacillus serious food poisoning. This one works differently from the emetic type. Instead of being caused by a preformed toxin, the diarrheal type results from ingesting bacterial cells that go on to produce toxins inside your intestines. Here's how it works. You eat food contaminated with live Bacillus cereus cells. These bacteria survive passage through the stomach and reach the small intestine. Once there, they begin to multiply and secrete enterotoxins. These toxins disrupt the normal function of the intestinal lining and cause watery diarrhea. Because the bacteria need time to multiply and make toxins, the symptoms of this type are delayed usually showing up 6 to 18 hours after eating the contaminated food. And what kind of foods are usually involved in the diarrheal type? It's less likely to be rice. Instead, it's more commonly linked to meats, vegetables, milk, and sauces that have been improperly stored or reheated. The symptoms here are also different. The hallmark is moderate to profuse watery diarrhea. It's important to note, the diarrhea is typically non-bloody. That's a key feature to help differentiate it from other types of infectious diarrhea. Along with diarrhea, patients may also experience crampy abdominal pain. The pain tends to be more diffuse, meaning it's spread out across the belly, and can be more severe compared to the emetic type. Some patients may also have a mild fever, usually low-grade. This happens because the body is responding to the infection by mounting an immune response in the gut. So to recap the differences between the two types, emetic type affects the upper GI tract, mainly the stomach, and is caused by a preformed toxin Cerulide. Symptoms appear quickly, usually within 30 minutes to 6 hours, and include nausea and vomiting. Diarrheal type affects the lower gastrointestinal tract and is caused by enterotoxins produced by the bacteria after ingestion. Symptoms take longer to appear, typically 6 to 18 hours, 
and include watery diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and sometimes mild fever. Both types are usually self-limiting, meaning they go away on their own without treatment, often within 24 hours. However, in rare cases, especially in immunocompromised patients or young children, complications can occur. Now, let's talk briefly about those rare complications. Bacillus cereus doesn't just cause food poisoning. In rare cases, it can cause more serious infections. These are called extra-intestinal manifestations, meaning they affect parts of the body outside of the gut. One of the most serious is endophthalmitis, an infection inside the eye. This usually happens after trauma to the eye where the bacteria are introduced through a foreign object. It's an emergency and can lead to permanent vision loss if not treated quickly. Another rare but dangerous condition is pulmonary infection, particularly from a subtype called Bacillus cereus biovar anthracis. This strain produces toxins similar to those seen in anthrax. It's been documented in metal workers exposed to contaminated surfaces. These infections can cause fever, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid respiratory failure. Again, extremely rare, but important to be aware of. We can also see endocarditis, which is an infection of the inner lining of the heart, especially in IV drug users or patients with central venous catheters. It presents with fever, heart murmurs, and signs of emboli like stroke or limb ischemia. Lastly, in severely ill or immunocompromised patients, bacteremia, which is bacteria in the bloodstream, or sepsis can occur. This may present with fever, low blood pressure, fast heart rate, and altered mental status. Let's wrap everything up with a quick summary and some high-yield exam tips. First, remember the two types of illness caused by Bacillus cereus. The emetic type is rapid onset and affects the upper GI tract. It's caused by a preformed heat-stable toxin called cerulide. Symptoms begin within 30 minutes to 6 hours and include nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Think reheated rice. That's the classic trigger for this type. The diarrheal type is slower to appear and affects the lower gastrointestinal tract. It's caused by enterotoxins produced by bacteria after ingestion. Symptoms show up 6 to 18 hours later and include watery, non-bloody diarrhea, crampy abdominal pain, and sometimes low-grade fever. It's more commonly associated with improperly stored meats, vegetables, and sauces. Both types usually resolve within 24 hours and don't require treatment in healthy individuals. But stay alert for signs of complications in vulnerable populations, like children, elderly patients, or the immunocompromised. Now for a few exam tips. 1. If a question mentions a patient who ate fried rice, followed by vomiting within 1 to 2 hours, think Bacillus cereus, emetic type. The key clue is the timing and the food. 2. If the symptoms are more delayed and involve diarrhea, with a history of eating meat or vegetables, lean toward the diarrheal type. 3. Know your toxins. Serolide for emetic type. Preformed and heat stable. Enterotoxins for diarrheal type. Produced inside the gut. 4. Gram positive, rod shaped, spore forming, facultative anaerobe. These are microbiology terms you'll see often on exams, so tie them to the image of Bacillus cereus to make them easier to recall. And finally, don't forget the rare but dangerous extra intestinal infections like endophthalmitis endocarditis, or even anthrax-like pneumonia caused by certain strains. While unlikely to appear in basic questions, they're great for advanced or bonus-style questions on exams. All right, that's everything you need to know about reheated rice syndrome, a topic that might sound like a dinner table joke, but is absolutely exam-worthy and clinically relevant. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. We break down complex topics so they're easy to understand, retain, and recall exactly what you need to succeed in med school and beyond. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.